This is great. Do you want a coffee? Or? Yeah, if you don't mind. Uh, Just go by here, actually. They're camping out, you know? <laughs> Hey everybody, Steph here. In this video, I figured it would make sense to look at coding from Pokemon's point of view. Why? Because Pokemon is popular now, and I think Pokemon and Nintendo in general has some great lessons to teach coders and app developers. So let me just go over the uh, first four bullet points. Uh, number one, Pokemon uses a great simple to use UI. Number two, great uh, usability. Seems that it's pretty simple to use. People really like it. They're getting into it. Notice that there are no groundbreaking, amazing graphics that require crazy engines to process. Yes, the graphics are nice. It's very pleasing to the eye. But the success of the Pokemon Go game doesn't have to do with whether or not uh, it can run 60 frames per second or uh, or you know how beautiful the graphics are it's literally all about gameplay it's all about content which brings you back to the most important rule when it comes to any piece of entertainment and apps and games especially of course it's all about entertainment content is king and it will always be king. So you can have a game with very simple graphics and it will still be a smash hit like crazy simple things like a Flappy Birds and you still have a smash hit because the content for whatever reasons is very compelling. Another aspect to the Pokemon game that I found out that uh, is very compelling for people is the social aspect, right? It's the ability for people to go out there, meet other people that are like-minded and so on. So let me give you a quick story. I don't play Pokemon just as a background. I have nothing against it. It's just not something I've looked into. But uh, yeah, so I'm at the grocery store and uh, the clerk, uh, young guy, I figure a you know, 20-year-old guy, young for me, and he goes, out of the blue, I didn't say anything, he goes to me, yeah, so this, you know, you don't want to waste your time on a sunny day like this playing Pokemon. And I looked at him and said, well, why not? He said, Pfft. I said, you know, what's the difference between Pokemon and uh, hockey or watching hockey, football, baseball, basketball, any of these things? So then, of course, he opens up and he starts getting, getting into the whole thing about Pokemon, how he plays it, he loves playing it, running around. And he really expressed to me the... Uh, the fun, the social aspect of it, the fun aspect of it. And then he brought up the fact that uh, it could be, I think, later on or soon, you'll be able to trade your Pokemons and so on, which will add another level of addictiveness to the game. So let's look at this from an app developer, a coder's point of view. Again, to, to stress, you have a wildly successful game, not because it has amazing groundbreaking graphics or ama amazing groundbreaking physics. No, it's the content is very compelling and set up in a compelling way. That's something, at least for myself as a coder, I would sometimes get tra trapped in that mindset that the solution to the problem, because remember, when you're writing software, you're you're trying to come up with solutions to the problem. Sometimes the problem is just entertaining people. Sometimes it could be some sort of business problem. Anyway, a lot of times as coders, our inclination is to think in terms of how we can write code or put in a system or engine to solve the problem. Where a lot of times a problem can be just content presentation. It could be a story that you present. It really depends on uh, the circumstance. Now, this just doesn't apply to games. In uh, apps that I've developed that have nothing to do with gaming, it came down to, to that as well. We were working on uh, a software solution to solve a, a usability problem. And the usability problem is ultimately solved by just uh, better instructions, better uh, use of words in the app so that they, that they made more sense. It was as simple as that. So keep that in mind. Another thing that the uh, Pokemon game makes use of is something that uh, I'm going to draw from my, psycho my psychology experience and background. In university, my major was psychology. One thing I learned from probably the most important class that I did in my undergrad was something called the mixed 
variable payoff matrix, the mixed variable payoff matrix. So, okay, this is a nerd alert. I'm going deep into the rabbit hole of psychological nerdness. Um, the mixed variable payoff matrix is very important in terms of uh, making an app, making a game addictive. And what the mixed variable payoff matrix is, is a mechanism that's kind of hardwired into the brains of just about all animals. This is something discovered by this guy named Skinner, B.F. Skinner, I think his name was, B.F., I think it was. But anyway, his last name is Skinner. You can read about him. He's one of these guys who tried to figure out what caused animals to want to do things. And this falls under a category of learning theory. So anyway, long story short, what he discovers is that if you take a rat, you put him in a maze, and you put a piece of cheese on the end of the maze, and you say, go rat, go, 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 go for your cheese. And what he discovers is that if you fed the rat the same type of cheese, the same piece of cheese every time, the rat would get bored of going through the maze, and he wouldn't be so incentivized to do the maze. But what Skinner discovers is that if you change the reward randomly, you would, it was much more likely that the rat would want to go through the maze. So some, one time the rat might get there and might find you know, one cube of cheese. Another time you might get there, you might find two cubes of cheese. Another time you might find 10 cubes of cheese. Another time you might get there and find no cheese. They might change the cheese. So that's what you would call a mixed variable, meaning it's mixed, it's variable, and it's a payoff matrix. In the case of the, the rat and the maze, the payoff, may, the payoff is the cheese, right? So by changing uh, the frequency and the amount of payoff there may be, it's very addictive to whether it be rats, pigeons, and humans. That's why gambling is so addictive for a lot of people. That's why fishing is so addic addictive. Because you think about it, the one thing that's in common between Pokemon, fishing, and gambling is the mixed variable payoff matrix, right? The gambler plays because they'll, they never know when they will win that hand and they never know how much they will win. A lot of times they'll lose, doesn't matter, they keep playing because it's very addictive to get that win, to get that high of the win. The same thing with fishing. You go fishing, you never know when you cast whether you're going to catch a fish or not. You don't know how big the fish is going to be, what kind of fish it's going to be. That's why people love fishing. It's very it's, it's hardwired into our our brains. Now, Pokemon, as far as I understand, is a similar thing, right? You go around, you're looking around for Pokemons. You never know where you're going to find a Pokemon. You don't know if you're going to find a super valuable Pokemon. It could be uh, a very rare one. It could be a common one. There's Pokemons that you can only find in certain parts, certain regions. So if you're near a large body of water, apparently you got water Pokemons and yada, yada, yada. So you see how... The brilliant people at Nintendo, who I would uh, count out every now and then wrongly, they, they understand that very well. They understand mixed variable payoff matrix. They understand that content is king. Uh, think back when they came out with their Wii. And this was an underpowered console relative to uh, uh, Xbox and the PlayStation at the time. And everybody said, ah, oh, these guys are done. But instead of relying on powerful processors and beautiful graphics, they said, no, no, we're going to rely on unique gameplay. And it was wildly successful for the time that it was out, although it didn't have the lo longevity as the, uh, the Xbox and the PS3 and so on. But here they are again. They come out with... Uh, an ingenious game that uh, works on the basic principles of great UI, great usability, great content, and uh, the mixed variable payoff matrix, and they have a wildly successful game where people are running around cities and so on. That's why I took that video of me. I was driving uh, around, just I went to dim sum with a friend of mine, and he said, yeah, there's this uh, Pokemon Center, I think they call it, where everybody hangs out there because they have been told that there's a lot of Pokemon that are hanging around there. So he gets people out of their houses, running around and uh, chasing after these virtual uh, creatures. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know what? I'm not making fun of these Pokemon people. Why not? If you, you know, at least they're, they're getting out, they're being social, they're meeting people, they're doing things. There's nothing wrong with that. It's uh, no different from people get together to uh, play a game of basketball or uh, hockey and people go, well, hockey and basketball, you, you get your sports, you get in shapes. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. But they're all just games anyway.
right? At the end of the day, whether you're capturing Pokemons or whether you're uh, trying to get a puck into a, uh, you know, hockey, you're trying to get a puck into a net or a, bas a ball into a basket. Uh, by the way, those two games, hockey and basketball, two Canadian games, just, just, just to mention that. Anyhow, that's my take. As a coder, you don't necessarily need to have the most powerful, the latest and the greatest in terms of the technology. A lot of times, it's good old-fashioned uh, usability, content, nice-looking UI uh, that wins the day. I hope you found this useful, new style of video. And uh, because it's Sunday afternoon, I want to go out and chase after Pokemons. I didn't use my uh, fancy camera, so you have to deal with the webcam. I'm not going after Pokemon, so I'm just going out to relax. All right, we'll talk soon. Ciao, guys. I almost forgot my album of the day. So here it is. This is uh, Jimi Hendrix, Axis Bold as Love. This is a, a vinyl, standard vinyl pressing, but the, the uh, North American, European vinyl pressings of uh, Jimi Hendrix albums tend to be really good. This is an amazing album. This is his third album, and uh, he did after another amazing album called Electric Ladyland. This is considered one of the best albums of all time. It's a, a bluesy album with uh, some psychedelic elements in there, and it's got some amazing songs like Little Wing and Bold as Love and some great jams in there that a lot of people don't listen to. A lot of times when you hear Hendrix on the radio, you're hearing the big hits, but he's got a lot of great tunes that are not necessarily big hits, but they're just really good jams. So my third recommended album, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Axis, uh, Boulder's Love, great album. Check it out, whether you uh, download the MP3s or Spotify it or whatever, or get the vinyl as I have here. I hope you enjoy it. Ciao, guys.